In this video, we'll look at a common way of initializing the parameters of a neural network. So we're now at the final step in uh, our recipe for uh, obtaining the whole stochastic gradient descent training algorithm for neural net. Uh, so we have to look at the initialization method. So how do we initialize the uh, initial value of all of our parameters, all of our uh, hidden layer weights and uh, biases, as well as the output weights and biases? Okay, well, um, typically uh, we often first initialize the biases to uh, zero. Uh, so we don't express any preference for the uh, hidden units taking values that are above or uh, below, uh, you know, closer to the uh, saturation point, the lower saturation point, or the uh, higher saturation point. Um, if, uh, if you're using a, a sigmoid uh, activation function, and uh, if you would like most hidden units to be close to zero, to have uh, more sparsity in the activation of uh, your uh, layers, uh, sparsity is something we haven't discussed so much. Uh, in later videos, we'll talk about that and why that might be desirable. But if you do this, then you might want to initialize the biases to a large negative value. Like say, you know, the bias could first initially be minus 10 plus, you know, the activation that would give you the value of a, a unit. And so because of this, uh, if this term is not too large initially, most units would be close to zero. So that's one way of initializing a neural network in a situation where it's initially sparse in its hidden activations. Uh, but uh, that's for special cases where you think that's a good idea. Just in general, a good recipe is to just initialize to zero. Um, now for the weights, uh, well, let's see. First, uh, could we initialize them to zero? Well, uh, if we use the uh, tanch activation function, we can actually show that all gradients would be zero at the first time you compute your gradients. And so uh, if the gradients are zero, then you're updating your weights with in the direction that's the vector of zero, so you're not changing the weights. Uh, and so this essentially corresponds to a saddle point. You've converged quote unquote, and uh, you can't move away from that initialization. So that's obviously a, a bad idea. Um, well, okay, could we initialize all the weights to a non-zero value, but to exactly that same non-zero value? But that's also a bad idea, and that's because in that case we can show that all hidden units in all layers uh, will always behave the same. All hidden units will uh, compute exactly the same uh, uh, activation function and uh, essentially all units, their connections with the layer below will always stay the same. And, uh, and so intuitively though, we want a neural net where we have different hidden units that do different things. And so we need to break the initial symmetry that, we've, uh, that we would have enforced if we had used the same identical value for all weights of uh, all uh, units. And so the recipe that people usually, usually follow is that they're going to sample stochastically the initial value for all the weights. Uh, and uh, one thing that we propose here is to use a uniform distribution in some interval minus b to b, so uh, around centered at zero. And the value that's suggested that we propose here is the square root of six divided by the square root of the sum of the number of units in layer k and number of units in layer k minus one. Uh, and um, so that might seem like a strange formula. Uh, let's first notice that um, we want to sample around zero because we want initially small weights. We want to start with a simple neural network that's not too nonlinear. And because the probability that all weights are sampled, you know, uh, get an initial value that's exactly the same, is essentially zero, uh, then we can break symmetry. So now each hidden unit is going to be initialized with a slightly different uh, initial state, initial set of weights. Um, so other values for B could work well. This is just one proposal. And this isn't like this isn't an exact science determining good initialization for the neural net uh, the parameters of a neural net you can look at this paper this is where I got this uh, formula here and uh, they can show under certain conditions that the uh, hidden layer values act the hidden layer activations and also the gradients that are back propagated will tend to have uh, similar ranges of values, similar variance across the different uh, layers. And that's something that's 
It means, uh, so if you have very big gradients at, say, the top hidden layer and small gradients at the lower hidden layer, then uh, intuitively this means that the top hidden layer will train much faster because it's, it's pushed further away from its current value because the gradients are bigger than the uh, lower hidden layer if they had a smaller gradient. And so they try to correct for this, at least initially, by using this value and they show under certain conditions that this is well behaved. All right, so this is a very reasonable uh, initialization recipe to use, and I encourage you to use that. And, uh, but uh, as I stated, uh, there are other papers that might suggest other values which might work well. One thing that you would want to do is perhaps use always the same formula, but at least try different seed for, how you for your random number generator that generates uh, uh, numbers between minus B and B. And so try different values and then see which one works better uh, uh, as a solution for, in terms of the quality of the neural net you get. All right, so this is a good recipe to follow for initializing your neural network.